How are you? I am good. I am great, actually. Awesome. I am wonderful. Yes, I am wonderful. I am good too. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, yeah, everyone. How are you guys doing? Um, it's a new year. What has it been? We're, we're, we're like halfway through the month of January already. Today is the 16th. I, um, yeah, just trying to wrap my head around that. <laughs> I know it kind of, the year just, I don't know, like there was December, there was some semblance of Christmas, then there was a new year, and then it was back to normal. It's just, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I this don't know. This year has been different for me, though. Huh? This year has been different for me, though. Um, and that's why I'm excited about this evening's topic. Um, because, you know, it's a, well, I would say, yeah, it's the first year I like, yeah, I have this different. It's a, well, this pause in my spirit about this whole planning thing, you know, this whole New Year's resolution and everybody doing vision board and all sorts of things and you're making all of these plans. And um, we've been fasting, so it's like, you know, I, I have a pause in my spirit, like, okay, that's your plan this year. So um, I, I just wanted to talk this evening. I wanted us to talk about what people do, what's, what's their New Year process. Um, but first, before we go there, I would just like us to have a minute of gratitude. Yeah. What are you grateful for? You know, hmm. I have quite a bit to be grateful for. Um, Jan, um, 2022 was a half and half um, challenging, especially in the second half of the year. You know, it was it was really challenging for me, and um, I'm surprised. Like I made it through to the end of the year um, alive, smiling, great. You know, totally grateful for so many things and also grateful for how the year went mm -hmm. because of now the fruit and the benefit that you see coming out of it and um it just makes me say that i am just grateful for who god is um you know his character his ways um that are often even resisted by us because we don't understand you know or it doesn't feel comfortable but um God is just so wise, and I'm grateful that he's not like us. Girl, let me tell you, I'm so grateful for that. I'm grateful he's not like us. But also, in December, I really had some, you know, special moments. I think um, the bond with those closer to you, the friends that are closer to you, um... I had some really intimate times and um, it also caused me to reflect on, you know, who I have in my life. So, you know, I'm grateful for the people that are there with you, especially um, when you're going through rough seasons, they have your back, you know, that kind of a thing. Um, so I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for my clusters, you know, I'm grateful for life, you know. I'm not in need, <laughs> you know, despite what's happening around prices going up and all, but, you know, I've never been without food on my table and I'm, I'm grateful for that. And I'm healthy. I'm healthy. Yeah. 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 There's just so much to be grateful for. Um, I'm grateful for all that I learned in 2022 and I learned a whole lot. I learned a lot about me. I learned a lot about God. I learned. I just learned. I learned a lot about um, how to build great relationships. Uh, and just 
really, really grateful. I'm grateful for, for life. So many people didn't make it into 2023. Um, and as I said, I, I'm grateful that we have food on the table and health and my children are, are, are good and at school and doing well. And I am just grateful, you know? Um, I'm grateful for the tough seasons though, because it's in those tough seasons that I learned the most. Um, and in the top season, you won't um, necessarily feel excited about it. But I've come to realize that a top season means that something I'm learning, I need to learn something. And so, because I love learning, I'm always just jumping in like, okay, God, what do I need to learn? I don't like being here, but I know that obviously if I'm here, I need to learn something. So, yeah. You know, I'm grateful for those moments because it means that I've gone a level up because I've learned something, you know, whether it is about the character of God, whether it is about my character, whether it's things I need to change about myself. I'm just, just really, really grateful. And I'm glad and happy that I get the opportunity to do this with you. We <laughs> uh, brought this together last year. I'm so grateful for that. Um, and I'm just, I'm just a bundle of gratitude today. Let's just call it that. I'm yeah. Happy. You know, there, there's just, there's such a beauty in the surprises that God, you know, drops on us. Um, and I think even our, our coming together um, was one of those surprises, unexpected. Um, mm -hmm. And out of it came something so beautiful. Um, yeah. We challenged ourselves last year and here we are again in the new year. Here we are. You know, it's no longer a challenge. It's now a commitment to pursue. It's now a, a part of our purpose. Yeah. And um, God knew what he was doing when he did. Always. You know. Always. You, know. Always. you know, sometimes I wonder if you look at it and I say, what's your name? Yeah, man. Go and run up your mouth. I don't know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. She's the one who doesn't know anything. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But yeah. So, this evening's topic is um, about... Um, about the new year practices. What are the new year practices that, that people go through? You know, and, and some people put so much uh, pressure on themselves and I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to eat well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, and the truth of the matter is research has shown, and when I heard the statistic, I was like blown away. They said that by March, 90% of people would have abandoned those resolutions. Yeah, yeah. And so the question is, why do we put ourselves through it for a year? The, the beginning of anything, it's always a special moment. Um, you know, yeah. whether, whether it is the start of a day and even more the significance of a year. You know, um, we celebrate our birthdays every year. You know, mm -hmm. we have events that are recurring every year. So there is a significance um, for a year to us. Uh -huh. um, and rightly so. And so the beginning of a year, it's always a, a good time to start fresh. So I, I believe in you know, doing that um, retrospective look and, and coming up with, with, with resolutions, but it's how and what you put in place to ensure that it, it stays. So the, the fact that by March, most people abandon it, it's, it's not because the principle is wrong, it's just a process. Uh -huh. You know, it's the right. process. There we go. It's the process. <laughs> it's the process. And so, um, I think I think the, the, the thing is I hear a lot of especially now social media there's just a lot of 
excitement and buzz around doing the fish on board, or, you know, making these resolutions and putting yourself out there and say, oh, I want to do this, or I'm going to do this. And sometimes our why is, I think one of the big issues is that we've not identified our why for these things, you know? Just, just, you so you do, so you see somebody and you do something um, on Instagram or wherever, and you say, oh, that looks really cute. I think that would work for me, you know, and you, you put it on, but there is zero frame of reference in your life. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, so it's just one of the ways that you set yourself up. And, um, or people, people give up too soon because it's hard. Or you don't see the results that you're looking for in the time, mm -hmm. you know, and and there's just so many. And or or because you didn't put the process, because you didn't create a process around it, life comes at you. And when life comes at you and finds a vacuum, it just settles into all the empty spaces and just take over. Yeah, you go back you to know? your default. You go back to your default. Yeah, and 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 um, and so. Um, we just really have to look back at how do we, what's a, what's a good way, I would say, to, to, to what's a good process then? Mm. Start. I mean, uh, go ahead. Before you even, I mean, any, well, like most things, every process starts with a level of awareness. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, what happened this year when I set my goals, it didn't happen. It's also the awareness of what happened before, but also an awareness of what you may not know and this pursuit to get additional knowledge, right? So it's that sense of complete responsibility. So as you're saying, you see something on Instagram and it looks beautiful and you want to participate in the events. The persons who are leading it are power people and you want to, you know, you want to draw something from them and there's nothing wrong with that. But there is a, a time when within yourself, you have to know, be aware of what is it that I need to know and understand you know, going into this process. This is your responsibility. It's not a person's responsibility. It's not the vision board's responsibility. It is your individual responsibility. Um, a desire is great, but it doesn't, a desire is just not enough. You know, appreciating the beauty of something is, is great, but it's just not enough for you know to own and experience that same thing for yourself. So it starts with the awareness. We always talk about this all of last year, becoming aware so you're becoming aware of yeah. the pitfalls what have you learned from the previous year there's a, so much that you've learned what happened last year this time you know with the resolutions uh -huh. what could what areas do i need to improve on um what did i fail to recognize last year if you come back this year and you're doing the same thing you're gonna get the same results if you don't change something then nothing is going to change you know, if, so nothing, if nothing changes, nothing changes. Nothing changes. So there is the awareness of what the past has taught you. And there is now the awareness of what is that space that I'm operating in? You know, who am I relative to everything else around me? I am trying to attract or I'm trying to cause something to improve in my life. You know? How much do I understand the context? How much do I understand whether or not, yes, that, that really can be mine, but this is the condition for it. You know, that simple thing as sowing and, sowing and reaping, the law of sowing and reaping. You can't reap, you can't enjoy without sowing. And so it comes now to the point where if you understand that, then when you're going into the process, Jan, you're not going to just give up in March because you know that sewing is not something that is overnight. It's an investment and it takes right. time. Um, yeah. And then you also know that the whole objective of having new goals and, and new things that you desire is because you don't have it now. You're not wanting something you already have. You're right. wanting something you don't have yet. So the fact that you don't have it yet means that you also have to go through that process 
of reorienting yourself, of training yourself with different habits. That's not overnight, you know? And you have to be prepared to, to fall down on your face sometimes and brush, pick yourself up, brush off and go again because you're not surprised by the fact that it doesn't work in the first month because it's not going to work in the first month if you're trying to adapt something new, you know, or ad adopt a new habit into your life. It takes a while to form it, you know? Well, the experts said that it's 66 days straight yeah. to, actually, to actually get a new habit going. But I want to throw a different spin on this whole thing here now. So if I buy... Um, I buy uh, some piece of equipment and I want to know how it works. I'm going to go to the manual or I'm going to go to the manufacturer. Or an expert. Or an expert, yeah. right? So I started to think about it and I said, you know, Lord, I am not going to get up and make any plans of my own because I've seen how that works. Mm hmm um, I, you are the manufacturer. I want to hear what's on your agenda for me this year. What do I need? And so there's this, there's this whole thing of just cutting back the noise and just sitting down and just seeking and asking the questions, you know, kind of like, you know, just, just write all the questions, ask, ask what you're asking of the Lord, like, like, what am I supposed to do in this year? Who am I supposed to be connected with? Mm -hmm. You know, what are the opportunities that you want me to, you know, take advantage of? You know, who are the people you want me to? And start to ask those questions. And it's a, it's a different kind of way of approaching, um, of approaching the planning process. And if you sit still enough, the, he will start to answer. You know, mm -hmm. what are the things that I need to get rid of? What are the things that, um, how can I, and you, you, talk, you can talk to him about all of these different areas of your life. You talk to him about your finances. You talk to him about your spiritual life. You talk to him about your work life. In the same way you break it down for anything else. It's, it's about asking those questions, you know, and understanding what do I need to learn in order to start, my, I would like this, but what do you want? What do you say? Yeah. And, and it's now getting to that place that's void of all of the stimuli, whether it is social media, whether it is friends, whether it, whatever normally drives your process. It's now just getting quiet um, with God and saying, God, I want what you want for me this year. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I want what you want for my finances. I want what you want for my family. I want what you want for my work life. I want what you want. And going after it in that way ensures that you have the manufacturer's perspective. And it ensures that you are, it, it, as a matter of fact, it increases the likelihood of it happening tremendously, you know, because you are now ordering your steps. Mm -hmm. And we always, we always talk about this, you know, just in terms of ordering your steps. It may be a very narrow road that you have to walk on and you're not all over the place, but it's a very focused road, you know, and it's one that is, it's hugely dependent on you trusting, mm -hmm. yeah. trusting God that he's leading you in the way that you should go. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, oh, yeah, sorry. yeah, go ahead. I'll say, let's, let's, let's set the framework for our listeners. Um, and we come from the place where we are doing life with God. Wow. This is a partnership. It makes no sense, 
especially with all of what we're seeing happening around us now, it just makes so much sense to partner with God in your life, right? And if you're partnering with him in your life, we're talking about every aspect of it, as Jan was saying. Like, no room should be hidden, no place should be closed, because it's just pure wisdom to have the wise God, the creator of heaven and earth, the one who knows the beginning and end, to be your partner in life, right? Um, But the thing about partnership too, which is what we're trying to emphasize now, is with any relationships, both persons don't have the same role, right? And so we are in a partnership with God, but we're not equal in everything in terms of the role. We have different roles. So God is chairman. And I am CEO of my life. So I am accountable to the chairman. The chairman is responsible for guiding and directing me. And if I go into the partnership with that full awareness that he is chairman and I'm CEO, then I'm going to check with him and get his guidance on every area of my life. I don't want to plan to fail. I want to plan to succeed. I want to plan because I, when I set a goal, it's because I want something. It's not because I don't want it. So it may not be for me, but eventually I'll know. But the point is, because you want a plan of success, you want to ensure that you use that partnership. Or if you don't have it, you foster that partnership with God so that going forward, starting now, you're doing everything with him. Like that's that's a guarantee of the guarantees, right? That that beats even a lifetime guarantee because this one extends to eternity. <laughs> eternity right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And all the things about all the things about us are, you know, what it is that you're passionate about. You know, all of those things are merely tools into what you're called to do. You know, and sometimes we try to run ahead of ourselves. And try to do things in our own strength and try to jump the gun, you know, and hit step 16 when we really should be at step 6. Right, right. Um, because there, there are things that we need to learn along the way to be really successful at step 16. And um, and so you, you're, that goal needs to be driven by, 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 by the, 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 the guidance of the chairman. Exactly. You know, that that goal has to be driven by that. That's exactly why you need a chairman, to keep you in check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, there was, when I think about it now, I mean, there are times when all he would do is show me one little thing, and I run gone. And I'm down the road, and I said, but God, where are you? And he says, I'm um, right here. <laughs> <laughs> I want them. And so sometimes, you know, sometimes we, we, we are, we're busy rushing ahead, trying to live the dream, live the life that the world says we should have. All yeah. the trappings. There's so many, there's so many um, brilliant people. There's so many talented people. There's so many rich people who end up taking their lives or, you know, because they achieved all of that and they still weren't happy. Yeah. They still didn't have a purpose. They still haven't found their purpose, you know? And and so it's, it's important to walk your journey because you were created for a specific journey. You know, nobody else is looking on. If I look on Andrew's life, I said, boy, I really like, and I really like, and I really like, boy, you know, I could pattern my life after you, but I was never meant, you were meant to be you, and, and me meant to be me. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so, so there is that, there is that willingness to, I think you used this term before, to hold everything lightly. Even yeah. the very things that we desire. Because we are aware that we only see in part and we only understand in part. 
And if we understand that and we trust our chairman, then every desire, you know, every hope, you know, um, we can hold, yeah, and share it with him, honestly. But we hold it lightly because we know it's if, if it's for us, it will be ours, right? We know that we don't always know the best time, but he does, right? Mm -hmm. And we also know that sometimes we need to be prepared for it before we can get it. Otherwise, it's going to destroy us. Now, we don't know this because we think we know what we know. But God knows this, and that's why at times we get disappointed when we pray for something and it doesn't come. But if you understand how God works and you understand that his heart towards you is good, right? Mm -hmm. And like he says in the Bible, you as a parent, if your child asks you for something, do you turn around and give them a snake? Do you turn around and give them something that will hurt them or damage them? It's the same thing with God. And sometimes that means not giving us what we want because we don't realize that the very thing we are going after is going to destroy us or hurt us, you know? So again, it's, it's, it also comes with that, that relationship that you have with God, Jan, and understanding his character and trusting mm -hmm. that character, you know, mm -hmm. and allowing yourself, no matter what you des desire, no matter what you see, no matter what you think you understand, to always being a posture where, Lord, I'm giving you what I see and feel, but I hold everything lightly because I know you know what is best and you know what is right for me. You know, and that makes a difference. It makes a huge difference because there are times when we hang on to stuff or we hang on to ideas and we end up harming ourselves because we are just dead set on this is it. And others. Yes. Yeah. Don't forget that, Brad. And, and others. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're just, and, and you can't live your life like that. No. And then, you know, and here it is. Here is what we do as human beings. We rush down this road that we want to go down. Don't ask anything. We just rush down this road. And you rush down this road and you're meeting an accident or you're dropping a hole and you say, but God, why? Oh, you caused this. Happen? Where is God? <laughs> How about could I cause this? What me do? <laughs> you know, God is over there saying, um, I told you not to go there. Did you ask me any questions? Yeah. You know, did you ask me? <laughs> yeah. All right. So we, we see all of these things, Jan. So what's the approach? Somebody who is saying, okay, I want to just do this thing right. I want to start fresh. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be taking advantage of the beginning of the year. We're still in January. It's still fresh. It's still the first month. Um, you know, so we're not behind schedule. But to add to that, so listen, any day is a good day to start. Yesterday was the best day. Yesterday was the, but the next best time is now. Right. So even if it's not today, and you 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 watch this one month later, you watch this into March. You start. You start now. That's the only time you can start anything. So whenever your now is, that's when you start. Right. Yeah. So what do you do to, to 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 set yourself up for success? You know. So the process that I've sort of worked out is. Is I have several things that I look at, and in the, from this list, I look back first, and then I look forward. Okay. Um, so it's it's looking at my health. Health is one top. Health is one one heading. Then I look at my my spiritual life. I look at my finances. I look at family, right? And I look at community, like how am I in the community, whichever community that I'm in, and how how do I, um, and of course there's also work, what you do for work, or whatever your impact is. So these six areas, there's health, family, finances, the spiritual life, um, what did I leave out? The spiritual life. Um, you said health, um, community. Community um, and um, and your work. Your professional right? life, yeah. Right, your professional life. 
And so you, you take a look at these areas and you look at it from behind. So you look at last year. And you say, well, how did this turn out? What did I hear God say about any one of these things? Have I done it yet? Have I not done it? Is there something that I that I, that I'm still doing that I shouldn't be doing? Is there anything that God said about any of these things that I've not done yet, or have I done what God told me to do, and what was the result of that? You know, and so that will now give you some insight into okay, all right, God, we are in this new year. Start to ask the question: What do you what do you want for my family today, or for my family this year? Lord, I would like to see more of this. So there's, it's, it's, so it's kind of, it's almost like a, a conversation. You're having a board meeting. Yeah. Pretty much. When, 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 when it's in corporate, what we used to do at the start of every year or the financial year is that we'd have, we take a look at our, our plans. We take a look, we do a year in review and look at all your critical, your, your key performance indicators and say, well, how well did we do? And then you, you, you create a plan for the next year. And so it's, a, it's almost the same kind of process, but this time your chairman that you're doing this process with is God. And so very important to this process is a, a space, a quiet space where there, there are no interruptions, there are no distractions. They're just you and him. Mm. There's just you and him and just you quieting yourself and quieting your thoughts. Cause you know, and, and also very important to this process is to lay down all your anxieties before you get started. You know, don't condemn yourself. Don't start and say, boy, I should have done this and I didn't do this. And a lot of people don't do reviews because they don't want to feel bad about it. But the truth is just Put down the anxieties. God accepts you right here, right now, where you are, right? And as long as your posture is before him that I want what you want for me, then he, he's, he's willing to work with you, right? So it's it's uh, put down the anxieties and say, all right, Lord, let's just take a good look. How well did I do here? How, how you know, and just ask yourself the questions and know them. So where, where you think I can improve or whatever? What did I not listen to? What did I, you know, what did I do? How did I impact, you know, um, all of these different things? And then no, you move over into the new year and say, okay, God, well, what would you like for all of these different areas? And then you go through them one by one and you state what you want. And then you ask the questions of him, ask him, you know, the boy learned this year I'd like to see so and so happen from a family, so and so happen from a finances. Write it down. You know, just write down that whole interaction and just be quiet. Um, that you can hear. You can listen. You can yeah, you can you can you can listen because he's speaking and he won't shout at you, and he won't talk over you. So some of the times that you're doing this, you really just have to be Mm -hmm. But, you know, you just have to be still so that you can hear what he wants for you. You know, mm -hmm. um, who do I need to talk to? Who do I need to call? You know, how can I do this better? You know, and, and, and you know, the, the, the Lord knows your heart and knows, knows what you want, but that doesn't stop you from telling him. You know, the Bible says, make your request known. Make your request known. That's what he said. And um, just to add to what you're saying, um, sorry to interject, you're making your request known up front also so that you can release yourself of it. Right? Mm -hmm. When you articulate it to God, it's almost like you are giving it over to Him. So you have a desire, it creates a pressure within you. You know, and then what you're doing is, Lord, this is my desire and I am giving it to you. So once you do that process, what should remain is a very light person that is now able to hear. 
Because yeah. as long as what you want is still forefront in your mind and in your heart, you are not going to hear God properly, right? Or you're going to hear with the filter of what you want. Yeah. Right? And so there is a wisdom when he says, make your request known. There's a wisdom to coming and confessing, coming and asking, you know, and releasing. And then listening without yeah. that influencing you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's why it's, it's so necessary to just get to a place where you can just block out all so don't bother walking there with your phone or your computer to me when some people have more self-control than others but just anything that you think will distract you you know in that so space to step away find a little quiet space for you for yourself and just 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 be with god you yeah. know um and i guarantee you you'll walk away with something that may surprise you um and and um and, and one of the things in this passage is one for me is give up the need to understand everything that you hear you don't have to understand it this is where the trust factor comes in where you're say where you hear something and you might say oh well that's a, that's big that's that's mm, i don't know about that <laughs> you know and you're like, I don't know how. Well, write it down. Write mm -hmm. it down. He's planting something inside of you that it may not be for now, but and it could be for now. It's, it's not even just... One of the things to Jan is that when he plants something, it doesn't mean you wake up tomorrow and it is there, right? When he reveals stuff to us, it's for us to partner with him in that. So once he reveals something to you and you know it far-fetched, you are nowhere near there, it's bigger than yourself, what he's saying to you is, this is the plan I have for you. But what you do now is to prepare yourself for that plan, right? So when he gives us that insight, we write it down, but now we have a responsibility for me to prepare myself for the plan God has for me, what do I do now? What can I do in this year? What's the posture and the habits I need to develop in order to ensure I stay on the path that will take me to that fruition? So we have a responsibility with anything. So he can, he can show us something we need to correct. He can show us a plan of the future. He can show us something new altogether to do now. Do not try to figure out what he's going to say. You need to be so open because he can come from any side and he can yeah, download it in any, any way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Th there was yeah. something I wanted to highlight, Jan, <clears throat> that often is overlooked and, and that is what you need to maintain. Mm -hmm. So initially you said, look over the current year, do a year in review. And a part of the reason why you do a year in review is you need to acknowledge the achievements you've made, right? You need to acknowledge the habits, the new habits that you have developed that has helped you to be a better person, right? Or to live a more healthy life. What do you do with those things? You have to carry them forward. Yeah. If you don't yeah. maintain those things, then you're going to revert to where you were. And so an yeah. important part of going into any new season and any new period is not just what's the new that I will do, but also yeah. what do I need to maintain? Mm -hmm. What have I achieved yeah. and what do I need to do to maintain that achievement? Right. Yeah. You know, you, you mentioned um, the whole thing of habits and that is such a critical, critical um, part of being successful. So if you, one of the, the, the reasons that they've highlighted that people give up on their resolutions very quickly is that um, they don't create the habit 
that are necessary to effect that change. So, for example, I decide that, you know what, I want to lose some weight and I need, and I, I, I am going to be whatever, how many million pounds by June. But I eat the same way, I don't exercise, or I exercise the same way. I do nothing different, right? And it could simply be you tweak your diet in terms of what you're eating, you know, how you're eating, or you, you, may, you may decide to start a new exercise program, something else that's going to take you to the new level. But it, again, it requires consistency, right? It requires a great level of consistency. So if you need to get up every single day and do this thing, you get up every single day and do this thing. You know, a lot of people say, well, boy, you know, I want to, I want to grow closer to God. You have to spend time with him every day. That's the only way you're going to go closer to him. If you want to lose weight, you have to eat less probably or you exercise. Have to exercise. You know, or you have to change your diet. You have to stop eating fast food. You know, all of these different things. It requires a change, but not just a change. So a lot of people actually make the change, but they're, they're not consistent. Consistent. <laughs> you know? Repetition. And, and even, yeah, and even in reviewing your life, you want to look at, all right, my life normally gets really busy here and here. Have a plan for that. Have a plan to ensure that you don't get swamped. In, so you know your life gets busy around whatever time of year for whatever reason, right? Then you know that, all right, I'm going to need to do a little extra planning here to ensure that this new thing that I say I want to do, that I can still do it. It won't affect it. Because, you know, it's like, oh, I don't have the time or I got busy and... And at the end of the day, you still don't accomplish what you want to accomplish. So the process, you, you know, one big part of the process is, as you say, what do I need to continue and what do I need to change? What do I need to change? What systems do I need to put in place to ensure? So like for me, one of the things is in, in exercising is I took out my clothes from, to exercise from the night before. So I don't have no excuse. I get up, I see it right beside my bed. I need to just put it on at the same time. But even before I go to do my devotion, I put on the, 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 the gym clothes because I know that right after I do my devotion, I need to go and exercise. It, and I'm more likely to do that if I'm in my clothes, gym clothes, than not. You know? Um, you know yourself. So do the things that will help you to create new habits. And help you to be more powerful in your life. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think one of Daniel's um, successes um, in Babylon it was that he was a very disciplined guy. He was very disciplined in terms of what he did and what he didn't do. All the successful people, if you look at Joseph, he was also very disciplined. So discipline is also another really, really huge thing. Is to do the thing that you're you're committed to do, no matter how you feel, you know. So it's 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 big. And then lastly, it's always good to share with somebody who can encourage you on those days when <laughs> you don't feel like it, or those days when you feel completely railroaded. That's your accountability days, partner. That's your accountability <laughs> partner. Someone who can say, well, you know, Andrew, this is what I think the Lord, this is where I think the Lord is leading me this year, you know. Um, these are the things that I need to change. These are the things that I need to do. Please help me. Someone you can trust and someone you can, who will see through your foolishness <laughs> and call you on it. You don't want somebody who is going to come and eat pizza. Support the foolishness. Exactly. You don't want somebody who's going to come and support the food. You want somebody who's going to lovingly give you a little tap and say, come on, we're not doing that. Right. You know, it's yeah. important yeah. to have those people in your life who 
and support you. So we we emphasize the fact that you look behind only for the purpose of picking up useful information, right? right. What have I learned? Um, what do I need to maintain? Um, what were the areas that would compromise my success? It's really doing a SWOT. You know, what were the things that threatened me? What were the opportunities that are there that probably I missed? So you're just looking to get the useful information so that when you come to your, your board meeting with Chairman God, you know everything is on the table and you have a full context. You lay it out and as we say, you unburden it first, you know, and you allow God to speak to you. And he doesn't tell you everything to the detail. He will give uh -huh. you a vision. He will give you a picture and you plug in the rest. So all of the wisdom you learned from the previous year, not the condemnation, yeah. no, the wisdom. We're only taking information that's useful. Everything yeah. else you leave behind, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to use that information that is useful, which is now wisdom for you in order to plug the details. And this is how you're also partnering with God. What do I need to do to ensure that that picture God gave me, I accomplish it or I move in that direction? What do I need to do to make sure that I maintain the successes I've already achieved, right? Um, you know, Jan spoke about several areas of your life that you look at in assessing and reviewing. And one of my top areas, and it is so much easier when you do this one first, because it feeds and it supports every other area, is the spiritual life, mm -hmm. right? And the beauty about looking at the spiritual life, it's now that intimate conversation with you and God, because it's really you and God life that we're talking about. Uh -huh. and and once that is set straight everything else is going to be easier to plan yeah. right it's it's going to be the thing that buttresses and supports every other area of your life so if there's a lot of stuff you want to do but you know you can't do everything in one year we just can't you always prioritize your spiritual um realm you always um prioritize the spiritual dimension of your life because that is what gives you the strength, the wisdom, the fortitude, right? To deal with everything else that, that you're planning, but everything else that may come during the year that you never plan for, right? Yeah. So we can't forget that the submarines are just going to turn up and we have to also navigate around them. And the one yeah. thing that you need at that time, especially when a crisis hits, you have to have your spiritual life. That's the one thing you must have anchored, secured, right? So because of the importance of it, you want to make sure that that's one of the first things that you plan with God. You know, what are the areas I need to improve on? What do I need to do to walk closer with you, Lord? What do I need to do to hear you more clearly? You know, what do I need to do to clarify my purpose? You know, which is your purpose for me to ensure that no matter what I plan now in other areas, it doesn't contradict it. Yeah. And that it's now in alignment. So that spiritual dimension, getting it right first, is about getting everything else right because everything is about supposed to be within that purpose, right? And if you don't know what it is, then you may end up pursuing and planning for something that is not meant for you, right? Yeah. So that's the wisdom of dealing with the spiritual as one of the priority areas and then the other areas now can support it. And that's when you're going to have a greater chance of success. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what is new? So we have something that we want to share with you guys. Um, we have launched a new YouTube channel. <laughs> it's called Faith and Work. And it's where it's an intersection of where your faith intersects 
with your work and how do the two of them work together so on this channel we'll be talking about pretty much like what we've been talking about here how do you the individual show up with your whole life and there's no um your your spiritual life here and your work life here but it's one life one life how do you navigate that space how do you look at and say well what is my purpose do i need to start a business do i need to work here do i need to do this who do i need how do i live out this purpose you know and um and so we're we're going to be touching on issues of faith on touching on issues of business of how to be at work we're gonna be touching on a lot of these other things and anything else that you think that would be useful for for you to hear from us um so you can go on over and look for faith and works 2023 and like and subscribe because we will be on that channel weekly um just helping you to navigate that space yeah um so we're looking forward to that yeah, the faith, faith and works also is us also recognizing that, you know, faith is that that element that operates in the natural with a spiritual knowing, right? Because mm-hmm. um, remember, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen in the natural, right? Uh-huh. But it is based on something that you already know but that is in the spiritual realm. So you know what you know, and God has told us what is. Faith is now coming into the natural realm, right? Knowing that it's already set in the realm that it starts, and it's now activating it in this natural realm. And so faith is that bridge that takes it from the spirit into the natural realm. And then now works is what you do in the natural realm. So you see it comes together. Faith determines what you're going to work on in this life, right? Yes, and, yes. And, and you can't manifest in the natural unless you work on the right. faith, yes. okay. right? On what you have faith, faith in. Works. Faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. And that's why we used um, that, 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 that name to help persons, one, to build the faith in, in different areas. And most of the time we think of faith, we're just thinking about um, spiritual walk with God, but faith is in every aspect of our lives, every single aspect, because whatever we believe in determines what we do and what we don't do. And so we're going to open up your eyes more as to the areas in which you have to activate faith and exercise faith and make very intentional decisions about who you're going to be, what your life is going to be like, who you're serving. And also to help you to ensure that you walk towards manifestation by doing the works that now align with that faith, you know? And so we're going to be highlighting as best as possible what we think, you know, is, 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 is needed, what needs to be known, you know, what is often not spoken about, but yet so essential to our walk, you know, not just as a Christian, but just as a human being. There are some things that we just don't know and we don't get yet, right? So we're hoping to shine some light this year, right? And so stick with us um, as we grow together and walk out our faith with works. (laughs) With with, with some work. (laughs) With works. Yes, absolutely. So guys, thank you for coming along with us. Please share, um, share the video. And also hop on over to YouTube and look for, um, and look for the channel, the channel, <laughs> Faith and Works 2023 it is. Yeah. And, um, so just jump on over there and like, and subscribe. We promise lots more light shining on that channel. Amen. <laughs> yeah. So. We look forward to seeing you. So we're back next week, same time, same place. And we're going to be talking about something equally interesting.
Right. And we hope that you take some time, if you have not yet done so, to, to go sit with your, your chairman. Your chairman. <laughs> yeah. Go sit with your chairman and have the conversation. It's time for a board meeting. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Time for the board, time meeting. For board meeting. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your week. Yes, have a great week. Have a great week. And remember to focus on the things that you're grateful for daily. Amen. Alrighty, bye guys. Bye, Jan. Bye, Andrew. <laughs> bye, Kimmy. <laughs> bye, Kimmy.